All right. Wee dog All right. Hello, everyone. This is the Doc Salem Water Spotlight. And today we're talking about Mike Plug. And we got Brian Criscow. He's going to be our Plug expert. On this what up, one. everybody? I'm a Plug fan, but I'm not a Plug fan as far as I don't know his history. What I do know is that his run on uh, Monster Frankenstein was completely amazing. Like, um, he actually. In my opinion, he didn't follow the, the universal monster uh, character profile for Frankenstein when he did Marvel's Monster Frankenstein. That's he cool. actually he actually used his his uh, he he took a whole new he his take on Frankenstein was completely unique in my opinion. Um, those books, if you're interested in them, you should definitely track them down because they're a treasure. Like those books are in I, amazing. I I'm not you. a I'm not a fan of his work on Ghost Rider, like you know, Ghost Rider's first appearance, but what he did with Monster Frankenstein, you can't top that. All right. Well, we're gonna let a boy Brian Criscow take it from here. All right. All right, everybody. What we're looking at here is the art of plug. Now one of the things that I I, I I don't know that immediately drew me to Plug when I was a little boy was uh, his work always had kind of like a I don't know what the best word for it would be a kind of gooiness uh, a elasticity maybe uh, but it also had a lot of heart and uh, he started out uh, drawing stuff when he was in the uh, in the military he was drawing like um, diagrams comic strips for like you know like the uh for like the um for the uh i, I guess like the uh, small publications that would be on military bases and then he got a job working for marvel i he didn't was, know that i didn't know that he was another military guy like oh, uh, yeah 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 see well no, there's a like because that's a that's a kirby thing too like kirby was in yeah. the, he was a military guy too like oh that's well, cool yeah, the reason why Plug joined the military was because he just didn't know what he was going to do with himself. So he joined the military and, uh, yeah, would do illustrations for Leatherneck Magazine. Oh, sweet. And that is how he got his start. And there's some of his very early work. This is the uh, staff of uh leatherneck magazine drawn i think it's like cavemen from the flintstones, flintstones? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right so that's early 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 mike plug when he was when he was in the uh military now once he got out of the military he went to work for uh marvel of course and his best known work was on the horror comics uh I agree with um, with uh, with Preston that his work on Ghost Rider wasn't his best work. Uh, in fact, he felt really bad about it. Uh, did he really? Yeah, he did. And uh, that's a running thing with Plug is that he always uh, he was never a fan of his own art. And uh, whenever um, one of the old timers would come by. And, uh, you know, I'll stop by his desk at the Marvel bullpen and say, like, hey, kid, you know, I read that last issue of, like, Man Thing that you did. Yeah, that was that was really good. That was really good. He'd be like, oh, thanks. But he always felt that they were just being nice. Well, that's a I think that's an artist trope. You know what I'm saying? Like every well, in my opinion, any artist that's worth his salt is like that. I'm like that. You know what I'm saying? But like. You always you're you're always your your toughest critic. You see what I'm saying? Sure. Like, sure. Um, and but Mike, took- look at that page right there where it's got Frankenstein's eyes, the brains of Frank. Oh my god, dude, that is so freaking amazing! Look now, at that layout, like that's so unique. That's it's pure plug. Yeah, pure and that's almost like an image layout too, right there. I mean, exactly. there's no borders. It's completely awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's, and you look at that eye shot, right? You see yeah. how you see the amount of detail, you see the feeling in the eyes, you see even like uh, how they're how they're kind of filmy. Yeah, yeah, right? I love that. They look, um, 
it's it's just um, as a kid, I looked at his stuff, and it, as a you know, horror comics are what got me into comics. And of course, I ended up being a fan of the superhero comics, but that was because you know, well, you know, you start reading comics, you're going to read superhero comics. But what got me into comics were the monster comics, and Marvel, of course, in the 1970s had the Marvel monster comics, in, which included but are not limited to Son of Satan, Werewolf by Night, Morbius. Talking Night, my language Night, now, dude. <laughs> right, Tomb of Tomb of Tomb of Dracula. Uh, you know, which was illustrated beautifully by uh, Gene Colan. Um, what am I missing here? I know I'm missing at least a couple. Uh, oh, Monster of Frankenstein, of course. And uh, Creatures on the Loose. Yes, Creatures on the Loose and uh, Ghost Rider, which I think I, I just mentioned. Now, here you're looking at some really early Plug stuff, right? And you can tell, oh, it's not a bad world, but it's not an especially good one. No, that's that has to be really early. In it, is. it is. And that's one of the things that's always exciting to me about reading uh, an artist's early work. If you look at an artist's um, work on an early run, of, uh, on, a, on a run of a particular comic, and it's their early work, you can mm -hmm. gradually see them evolving. You can gradually see them getting better. You look at Frank Miller's first issue of Daredevil, for instance, it's not that good. And then by the time you get to, you know, his 20th, 25th, 30th issue of Daredevil, it's just pure fucking fire. Look at that, though. Look at those layouts, dude. Like, Mike, Mike although he wasn't a horror, a horror artist, um, he was very dynamic with his style. And he also, he hit a bunch of good angles, like good perspectives. Right? You know? Right? Yeah. Like, like, for instance, the shot of uh, Jack Russell, the werewolf, coming through a uh, through a doorway. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. This is, so it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a cinematic style. But uh, that's something that would serve him very well later on in his career. So let's see what else we got here. Yeah, we got some really nice. Now so you, this was all for Marvel right here, this right? Is all, this is all, this is all for Marvel. Marvel. Yeah. Uh, now, I think that's an especially strong panel right there. Oh, I love that. That's fucking insane right there, dude. That's great. And one of the things he was especially talented at was movement. And you can see that right here, him throwing a wolf against the wall, right? How everything yeah. seems like it's in motion, right? Now like, his, his artwork wasn't bad back then. It was yeah. just basic. Like you, his, his anatomy and proportions were actually really good. Um, and his shadows were definitely, on, you know, definitely oh. per, per, really good. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, great stuff, but not, you know, not, not monster Frankenstein great. Not even, <laughs> not even, yeah, not even approaching, yeah. uh, you know, what he ultimately uh, achieved. Let me skip a little bit ahead here. And there's this Ghost Rider work, of course. Yeah. Ghost Rider does not hold up very well uh, in terms of. The writing <laughs> or a lot of the art. Let's face yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Let's. Well, Mike, I, I think there's some characters that an artist fits, and there's some that that just doesn't work. You know what I'm saying? Like Absolutely. Jim Starlin, when they put Jim Starlin on Iron Man, he almost right. got fired. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. What was what was Jim Starlin great at? The cosmic shit. Yeah. And, and here we go with. There we go. That's what I'm talking about Frank right there. Stein. Yeah. Look, Right now, now, now look at that page. Absolutely. Look, look at the amount of detail. Oh, Plug was a master. Yeah, Absolutely. he became as like a. I don't want to say he was, he was, like on par with Bernie, but in his own way, maybe. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like Bernie was almost untouchable. Actually, he still is almost untouchable. <laughs> Bernie, Bernie is one of those people that owns a genre, right? Yeah. Like you think fantasy, uh, especially like high fantasy, Frazetta, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely owns it. That's not to say there aren't other great artists in the field or in the genre, but let's keep it real. 
Frazetta dominates the genre. Absolutely. Day. As and far as Peyton. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, now with with horror, Bernie. Yes. Uh, uh, head and shoulders, without a doubt. But if you were to ask me who's, who the better artist was, without a doubt, Bernie. If you, if you were to ask me who my favorite artist is, I would say Plug. Well, Plug's paintings don't get enough um, exposure, actually. I think he... Like he was a he was a good painter in his own right. Oh, like yes, as far as a horror was. painter. Um, oh yes, he was. Look at this shit. Man. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, his his work on on Monster Frankenstein was second to none. Yeah. You know? and, and what was great about the Monster of Frankenstein was that this was not the universal um uh, 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 um the universal monster. You know, uh, the one was played by Boris Karloff in the old James Whale films. Uh, this was uh, Mary Shelley's monster. Yeah. And that's one of the things that really made this uh this comic absolutely uh sore. Later Who on Who took over Monster Frankenstein after Plug left? Was it Sal Basimo? Val, no, it was Val Mayerick. Okay, because he used the um he switched from Plug's uh model to the uh Universal Monsters model, which yes. I was disappointed to see because Plug's model was so unique. That it um like it it actually stuck in your head. You know what I'm saying? Like absolutely. It was, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And also, and mind you, Val Mayerick, very good artist, at the same time, a massive step down. Yeah. And also they did something really, really stupid. Uh they took away the monster's voice. Uh, he gets in one of the issues. He gets into a fight with. Dracula. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, Dracula slashes his throat, severs his vocal cords. So once again, we're left with the mute Hulk from the original uh, 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 Frankenstein, the 1932 version, or I'm sorry, the um, you know the the James Whale one, and also uh, Son of Frankenstein. Yeah, and Karloff always felt that the monster shouldn't speak. And uh, I couldn't. Well, the Bride of Frankenstein, like, I, like in the original Frankenstein, like the Mary Shelley's Frankenstein with Karloff, like I, I got a feel. I always had a feeling the monster never spoke because it was so it was so new to the world. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. And what I was yeah. hoping was in the second film, you see him learning to speak. Exactly. Like you know, you're talking about Bride of Frankenstein. Bride of Frankenstein. Yeah. And there's a very, very tenderly wrought scene where O.P. Heggie, who plays the hermit, the blind hermit, is teaching the monster how to speak. And you yes. suddenly realize, oh, my God, you know, somebody's finally showing him a little, you know, a tender loving care. And look at what's happening to him. He's evolving. And well, that's I why I tell people like Frankenstein's not a it's it's not a villain hero type of movie. No, you know? no, not at all. Yeah. And. Uh, what I was hoping when I was a kid was that in Son of Frankenstein, finally we would have the adult monster. So in Frankenstein, he's just a baby. And mm -hmm. uh, in Bride of Frankenstein, he's a teenager. Then like Son of Frankenstein, he should have been um, Mary Shelley's monster. Absolutely. Fully yeah. grown, right? And instead they made him just a mute, uh, hulking uh, brute again. And yeah. mind you, Sort of Frankenstein's an amazing movie, but that aspect of it's very disappointing. Now look at that. Look at the way that he draws water. Yeah, yeah. The way that he draws liquid, I always found very, very interesting. It's very organic. Yeah. Very. Yeah. And oh, look at that illustration right there. That's fucking amazing. Uh, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the one on the page right next to it. Oh yeah. That is fantastic. Like that's for Zeta level. Like, can you imagine that being painted like a Frazetta type of painting? Absolutely. I mean, that's on par with that Conan piece Frazetta did. Yeah. Oh, and uh, and um, Plug did a bunch of cull stuff, yeah. which is uh, which is absolutely fantastic, which we will uh, get to. Now, well, look at I, I know there's that there's here. a there's there's a book out there where Plug actually illustrated it, and Simon Bisley went back and painted it. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Well, if anyone was going to do that, that sounds great. Yeah, I got to find it. I got to locate it. Like, it's, it's, I've seen pictures of it and it is fucking amazing, dude. Oh, yeah. Boy, boing, boing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I, all right. I see that. 
Okay, let's skip ahead a little oh, bit. These are fantastic. Oh, absolutely. And here is some of his uh, some of his Cull stuff. Now, Cull is a character that's not as well known as Conan. I always thought he was cooler than Conan. Who, like, who played Cull in the movie? It uh, was Kevin Sorbo. Yeah, I thought I liked that movie. I thought it was badass. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. I I I I, I thought it was okay. Uh, it's not not as good as uh, as um, as Conan the Barbarian or something. Oh no, like that. not at all. But uh, but it's okay. Uh, Cull is uh, um, like I, I love me some Conan. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But Conan is my third favorite Robert E. Howard character. For me, yeah. it goes like this: It goes Solomon Kane, Cull, and then Conan. Oh, Solomon Kane was awesome, dude. Oh. Yeah. I would, but now, now look at that. That's just pencils right there. Yeah, that looks like Conan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I well, you know the um, there are similarities between the characters, and yet you, you know you can. Um, you see, this is this is much face. more. Yeah, this is more along the, the lines of what Plug was good at, right here. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. By this sex I rule. This is why I say, like, any inspire. I, I, aspiring artists should look to the past for uh, technique and don't look to like what's actually popular now, you know? Oh, writers too. Writers yeah. too. The, the, when, I, when I really wanted to get serious about my writing, what did I do? I, I, I studied my Shakespeare. I studied my, my Charles Dickens. Uh, I studied my, uh, studied, studied the classics. Yeah. yeah and absolutely. That's, yeah. you know, that's the, uh, that's the foundation. And here we have a very lovely shot of Cull facing his arch enemy Thulsa Doom. Thulsa Doom. Thulsa Doom is a lich, which is to say a undead a wizard. Uh, Thulsa Doom's name was used in the uh, 1982 uh, Conan the Barbarian movie by John Milius, scripted by uh, Oliver Stone, actually. Uh, but the character was completely different. I think they. Just oh, played. okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now. Take a good look at Thulsa Doom here and tell me if he don't look a little bit familiar to you. Like Skeletor? Exactly. <laughs> exactly, because the the He-Man Masters of the Universe toys were uh, basically uh, retrofitted um, Conan the Barbarian. Yeah, no, yeah. for... for, uh, for uh, they wanted toys to come out because the, you know there was a massive Conan the Barbarian was a massive fucking production. Yeah. It was advertised like crazy, and they wanted a toy line to go with it. Well, However, they were also trying to compete with Star Wars at the same time. Was it absolutely, like, absolutely, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. It was after Star Wars that all the sword and sorcery movies got green. Yeah. So uh, what happened was. The toy company, this is before you had toys that were based on R-rated films. It was uh, unheard of. Mm -hmm. And so they were like, well, shit, the movie's got out of an R rating. Like, how are we going to sell toys to fucking kids that aren't even going to be able to see the fucking movie, right? <laughs> so they came up with Plan B and took those figures and turned them into He-Man uh, and the Masters of the Universe figures. Oh, absolutely. And so Skeletor obviously was supposed to be Thulsa Doom, and they weren't going by what they had seen for the movie because the movie hadn't even come out yet. They were working from character design, so they looked and went. Uh, yeah, that... We're like, what does Thulsa Doom look like? And they came up with a character that a figure that looked like Skeletor, and they basically took the the uh, Thulsa Doom figure and uh, and uh, uh, called it Skeletor. Nice. Is that a is that a Mike Plug wash? This is an ink wash yeah this is all, awesome this is all ink work now what i always love about cull is that the right artists even though he can, he's often confused with conan all you have to do is look at his face and you can tell that's not conan yeah uh cull although he was a barbarian from atlantis like uh conan he comes from an era that's uh before long before the hyborian age in which uh, uh, Conan uh, 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 lives in. Uh, Cull is always a little bit uh, cattier, a little uh, smarter, a little trickier. Not that Conan's stupid, mind you. He's just not yeah. exactly book smart. Yeah, he's a thief. He's a thief. 
He's a barbarian. Yeah, yeah. whereas Cole is a character who is a barbarian who was hired as an assassin to kill a king. He kills the king, and the people who hired him are like, okay, time to hand over the, the crown. And he's just like, wait a second. I'm the guy standing here with a bloody sword and a crown in my hand. <laughs> fuck, fuck all y'all. I'm a big yeah. king. And, of course, he turns out to be, uh, you know, the hero that uh, that the uh, that Lemuria needs. It's not the hero you want, but it's definitely the hero you need. Absolutely. Well, that was that was um, that was Robert E. Howard's thing. He always felt that uh, civilization was a passing state of fancy, and that the person that's going to save you isn't going to be the uh, egghead. It's going to be the uh, it's going to be that barbarian. That's, oh, absolutely. That's yeah. up in the hills somewhere. That looks yeah. fucking amazing. Like look, that's that's just incredible. Look at yeah. look at this man thing. Yeah. Remember the gooeyness I was talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Right, that's the way crazy. that he would draw liquid. Right? Yeah, it looks the way the way that uh, I like he weird. framed it all with pl- with uh, floor. Yeah, mm-hmm. that looks amazing. Like yeah. he he was really like a, is he still alive or is he dead? He's uh, still Mike alive. Blue. He's still alive. That's Bob fantastic. Bob. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, he's he is uh, he is still going. Yeah, so, he had such a unique style. I don't know if he draws anymore. Like some of those guys lose it after they hit a certain age. I don't know if he has he, or not. He still draws. He still yeah. draws. I I don't I, I don't think his work is quite what it used to be. Yeah. Uh, there is some of his more contemporary work. Ah, oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Now is that Planet of the Apes? Yes. Nice. Now this is all pencils. Yeah. Type uh, what's referred to as tight penciling. Yeah. This is what black and white art is all about. Yeah. And there's now, can you imagine this being colored? No, I I, I can't. Absolutely not. I can't. It's beautiful. You don't need to do anything with it. And uh, luckily uh, he was working. uh, This was for the Marvel black and white uh, magazine, magazine sized um, Planet of the Apes comic. Mm-hmm. And what was great about those was they weren't subject to the comic book code. Yeah. So because, they can do anything. They can so, do exit wounds. They can do whatever. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. They could do some pretty, pr- pretty nasty shit, but also it was black and white. So the artists were working in black and white. They knew they were working in black and white. He drew this knowing that it wasn't going to be colored that it wasn't going to be inked that what he was putting on the page was going in the magazine. They colored it. Nope. Okay, cool. Nope. Because nope. that was a big uh, bitch about Bernie. Bernie didn't like his work getting colored. Like, uh, Yeah, well, you yeah. showed us you showed us some horrific examples. Yeah. Now, this is uh, Plug pencils, once again, but uh, experimenting with watercolors. That's not bad. No, no. It's like, wrong. is that Plug color in it? That's Plug. It... Yeah. That's Plug, using watercolors. <laughs> Now, the problem, once again, with Plug was um, he didn't like his own work. Yeah. And uh, he was never happy with it, and he didn't think he was a good artist. I mean, what the fuck? Yet he still got better. And yet he still kept getting better. Oh, look at this. Look at this. That is insane. Once again. I love that. I love that eyeball right there where you see the ape inside the eyeball. Oh. Yeah. Like that is crazy. The reflection of the ape inside the eyeball. Let me see if I can get a better shot of that. Yeah, now you feel my pain. <laughs> right? right. <laughs> That's beautiful. just crazy. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Just absolutely uh just stunning. Unfortunately, Plug really uh like I said was not crazy about his own work. And so he quit comics. The reason he quit comics was to go into movies Mm -hmm. as a storyboard artist. Oh, my God. Look at that shit right there. The reason he became a storyboard artist was because he wanted a place to hide. He wanted to a a way to make a living as an artist without um, feeling embarrassed by having his work out in public. So this was stuff that... You have to show us that man thing cover. You oh, can't. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is That's newly crazy, colored. Dude. Yeah, yeah, this is newly colored. Yeah. That's not the original cover. 
Okay. All right. It's I've still heard. badass. Like, oh, it's, oh, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Look yeah. Look at that. That is insane. This is new plume, by the way. Yeah, we're just masturbating over Plug over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised that the pages to this aren't stuck together. <laughs> And of course, you know, I know I know you're gonna like, you know, you're gonna love the uh the uh the pencils. And so uh right here you have an example of uh Plug's work on John Carpenter's remake of The Thing from 1982. Nice. Yeah, uh there's some uh, poster he did for uh Ralph Bakshi's Wizards. So you said he was trying to hide? He was trying to hide. Yeah, he, he was trying to work in a way where uh, people weren't necessarily going to see his work, except for like a small group of people. Now, did people judge him a lot? Is that why he? No, was no, no. It was all in his head. Okay, all right, but, right. Because, like I said, whenever yeah. like the uh, any oh, other hall, hall of famers would tell him, like, 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 kid, you got mad crazy chops. Like, this is really, really good stuff. He yeah. would always just shake it off and be like, oh, they're just being nice. Yeah. Well, there's, there's that aspect too. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you always like, as an artist, you always have to keep that in mind. Like people are going to try to just blow you full of smoke. Like there's like Tim Virgil is a perfect example of that. Like he's a master artist in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, but he said that people come to his table and say, you're, you're phenomenal. You're the greatest thing ever. And he was like, well, if I'm the greatest thing ever, won't you spend five bucks? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no, of, of, of course. And so when people do that and they just walk away from your table, and I've experienced this too, like people come up there like these are fucking amazing, everything, and well, they're from, you know I got prints of it, yeah, they're walking right by. You know? uh, <laughs> so I, you kind of think like, well, they're just being nice, you know? Well, yeah, but you know. Um... And I and I, and I and I understand that I I I I understand where where somebody might you know get that get that impression. At the same time, when people are paying you for your work, and you're getting fan letters, and you know, I mean, I you know, I just I just love this comic book stuff. But he yeah. just didn't want to do comic books anymore because he thought he sucked at it. And the, I think that the medium really lost. Uh, uh, a very, very special artist, and that we got cheated out of uh, decades of of work. Now he made a very good living in Hollywood. Uh, the this, for instance, these are his character designs. A little uh, poster work for the Ralph Bakshi Lord of the Rings movie. That was Ralph, a great movie too. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. And uh, Ralph Bakshi, of course, you know, he'd first worked with Bakshi on on Wizards, and. Here is his storyboard work. Now, if you start to look at this, the look, I'm sorry. Can I buy those? <laughs> I'm, oh, oh, he, he he's he's actually been selling these. Oh, I fucking I can imagine. Yeah, look yeah. at that. So, I've seen you, storyboards where they were just stick figures. Yeah. Yes, yes, these are not fucking stick figures. No, Th these are not storyboards. These th these are comic book panels. I mean, gore. I mean, like, too fucking good. Yeah. Look at the look at look at the shading here. Yeah, that's what I was looking what at. What the hell? It's, it's crazy. Right, huh. the, the amount of detail. I wonder if he threw these away, like threw away the, the originals after they were used. Yeah. I think I think he's I, I I think I think he hung on hung on to his stuff. Especially What's this, Supergirl. Uh Superman three. Supergirl. Uh, oh, uh, this is um, Caveman with Ringo Starr. <laughs> right here, he's you know showing his talent for humor. Yeah. Right. This is a dinosaur that's like sneaking up on Ringo Starr, <laughs> and he's starting to like you know get a little suspicious. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Yeah, this is this is for Caveman, which is a very fun. Uh, Movie. He also did a really great monster monster design for that. Yeah. Uh, let me flip ahead a little bit here. Here's some of his work for uh, Return to Oz, which is a uh, cult classic. It's a. It's not really a sequel to the uh, Wizard of Oz the movie. It's it's a uh, adaptation of one of the Oz novels, and it's really quite dark. 
and uh, well worth hunting down. There's there's our man with a bunch of uh, concept drawings and uh, some storyboards. Now look at this, man. Now is that a gallery? This scene is right there. No, this is the work that this this. It looks like it, don't it? No, this is yeah. this, this was the Black Cauldron. That he, that he was oh doing. shit! No way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, now, that's one of the coolest movies ever. It is, yeah. it is, and it deserves to be better known. Now look at the fucking detail here, man. Hail to the chat. I think we got somebody oh. in there. Oh yeah. <laughs> Anybody that's hanging out in the chat? You know, uh, uh with Dale. Hail, hail. Uh, th thanks for uh, gracing us with your presence, and I mean that sincerely. But look at that. That is not a freaking storyboard. That is not. I mean. This is this is insane. Look at the amount of detail here, man. Yeah, Plue was a master, dude. That's what I'm saying. Like he was he was one of those guys that would just, you know, they killed it. Like he he should have like he if he would he should have been a superstar in comics. It breaks my like, heart. You know what I'm saying? It, it breaks my heart. Like I like like I said, Hollywood's gain was our loss. And Hold on one second. Brian, okay. one second. I need to uh, turn you off for a second. Okay. Shoot, I can't get you back. All right, just stay where you at. Uh, God damn it. All it's right. okay. All right, we're good. <laughs> and these are his designs for Shrek, which he also did. Oh, he worked on Shrek too? He worked on Shrek. Uh, one of the things I really didn't like about Shrek was the character design. I it didn't look yeah, like his you know, designs look way better than what they actually used. Jesus look at, Christ! Look man. at this! Look at this, man! Look at look at the look at the personality, right? And these are di yeah. each and every one of these are different. These are all. It's like you mean to tell me that the design that you went with wasn't one of these. It was the one that they actually used, but that's because, of course, it was computer animated. And it was, yeah. uh, you know, the design that, that they went with was a much simpler one because you cannot get that kind of uh, feeling and that kind of life out of a uh, in computer animation. I like computer animation to a certain extent. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, they've made a think? they made a lot of innovations when it comes to that. But yeah. I'm always going to be a 2D animation guy. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I feel like 2D is is a lot more expressive. You know what I'm saying? It has, like, it has more heart and soul. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Jesus Christ! Look at that, dude. That whole fucking. Now, landscape. what would you rather? What, what would you rather have watched the uh, the the uh, uh, computer animated Shrek movie we got, or, or a Shrek movie that looked like this? I know which one. Yeah. I would have preferred. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That kind of looks like the original, like The Hobbit. You remember, like the movie The Hobbit? Oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I wonder if he worked on that too, like The Hobbit. Uh, I don't think so. I don't. Or the Last think. Unicorn, which is another one of my favorite movies. Like oh, that that's fucking a, that's Last a, Unicorn is insane, dude. Yeah, that's a great one. Uh oh, and if you haven't seen it yet, Mad Monster Party. God damn it! That's, <laughs> that's the movie that whenever people talk about like how much they love uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, I'm like, fuck that Mad Monster Party. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. What that's is this for? This is a this is just a uh, very cool illustration he did of a beast called the snag, like oh, a river like awesome. a uh, river monster. Yeah, isn't that great, dude? That's insane. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Look at that face that he put on there. Like that yeah. is crazy, dude. Yeah. See, that's reminiscent. Like th this is all from those old guys. Like those old guys back in the day. Like they knew how to, they knew how to be creative. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like yes. you don't get that nowadays. Like people. Don't. They don't do horror like this. They you know? don't. They don't at all. This is heavy metal right here, son. Without That's a what doubt. This is. And yeah. this is some other beautiful work he did. There's some more Lord of the Rings Jeez, stuff. That That's yeah. a nice looking uh, orc. And there is uh, Gandalf fighting the Balrog. Yeah. Oh, that's and. Crazy. Monster Rumble, Werewolf versus <laughs> Vampire. Ba -ba -boing. This is my shit right here. Oh, definitely. Look at that. <laughs> is that wings? 
No, that's that's from it's cape, Dracula's it, cape, right? Yeah, yeah, but it looks like wings, tattered wings. Is that beautiful? But it looks like wings. That looks exactly. fantastic. Yeah, is that great? Yeah, that's crazy. And like that's that's what I'm saying. Like Plug had a style that was unlike anybody else's because nobody would have drawn drew Universal monsters like that. No, you see what I'm saying? Like, no, I mean that's some crazy shit, dude. And look at his colors. You you can obviously tell like Plug painted that without you know? a doubt. Without a yeah. doubt. Now, this is an especially, I think, um, uh, moving uh, illustration of uh, of the Frankenstein monster. Because he has yeah, that, look do at it. that dopey look. He has a dopey yeah. expression. This is, more, this is more like the universal monster. A little bit. But even that, I mean, it's got like a... It almost reminds me of the bad guy from Rock and Roll. A little bit. Mosh. Yeah. 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 But... Yeah, dude. I mean, it, it's still insane. Like, you can learn so much from this kind of crap, dude. Like, I'll, I'll be honest. Like, I'm going to study <laughs> what you're showing me now because, I, I mean, just looking at it, like, I mean, there's so many pencil techniques and everything, like, involved in this watercolor illustration that he did that you just can't duplicate, like, with a computer, you know? I, I, I can always loan this to you. I can always uh, FedEx it. Or... <laughs> yeah, mail it over. <laughs> I'm no, not sure if you'll ever get it back, but... <laughs> I, I trust you. Uh, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, man. I'm sorry. I <laughs> lost it. Got, oh, yeah. it lost. Yeah, it's gone. Uh -oh. <laughs> <Never got here>. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, look at those character sketches. Jesus Christ. Oh, these, what was that these from? Were, a card these game? Were for, yeah, these were from a collectible uh, card game. Nice. Is that beautiful? Nice. Dude, that's nice. crazy. Yeah, yeah, man. Just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. And uh, sure enough, now look at that. Now you want to talk about Frazetta. Yeah. Interesting, interesting story. And I forget who it was who told this. But there is an artist who told a story about showing Frank Frazetta some of Plug's work. And Plug yeah. was like, I could do better than that. And the guy who told the story made a point to say that, like, you got to understand this was Frank's competitive side. It's not that yeah. he was a jerk. It's not that he was being dismissive of Plug's work. It was just, he was just like, I, I could do better. I could do that. You know, I could match that. And so the guy, he was just like, asked me to like draw, uh, asked me to draw something. And yeah. so they asked him to draw what Plug had drawn, which was a gorilla fighting a tiger. So it was like, can you draw a gorilla fighting a tiger? And Frazetta replied, uh, Pick something easier, and then like bust it off. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, that. yeah, that's that's fucking amazing. And it, like, even though it looks kind of realistic, like he he always had a over like this um cartoony like overlay onto oh, his work. You know what I'm saying? Down. Like, that's what it made was, him so perfect for comics. Yeah. Now, I I know a little bit about Frank Frazetta's competitive side because of Ken Kelly. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Ken's is uh, his nephew, yeah, and um, yeah, they were both in competition for the um, for a kiss, and Frank was his Frank's wife priced him a little bit out of uh, Gene Simmons's market because <laughs> okay. I mean Gene Simmons is notorious to, for being like a cheap bastard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, Kelly got it, and um, because they decided to go with Kelly because he was basically an unknown at the time, and he threw a fit, dude. Like Frank threw a fit about that. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. That's supposedly, crazy, dude. yeah, like a really, co really competitive guy, but not like in a dickish way. Yeah, from from, from from what I hear, like competitive, like in like a like a like an Ali kind of Schwarzenegger kind of a way. Yeah. Now, now, now look, now, now look at that. Can he draw the shit out of a gorilla or what? I love his watercolors. Like his watercolors are insane. Yeah, this yeah. is like a kid. This is a uh, a kid's book that he's been working on. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I don't know about a kid's book. Like that looks a little crazy for a kid's book. Right. <laughs> well, this clue we're talking about here. Yeah. God, that's awesome. I love yeah. his, the way he plays with light and color and all that kind of oh, stuff. Just fantastic. Just, fa just, just fantastic. And let me see, because I I skipped over like a lot of stuff in here, but yes, this is. Just oh, I believe a, it. Yeah. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful book. Oh yeah, there's a a nice shot of a ring wraith. Nice illustration of the monster approaching uh, a little girl. 
And uh, like, once again, you could tell that this is sort of the, um, the universal monster because of the yeah. uh, stupid, like, you know, the dopiness of his expression. But uh -huh. he also looks happy, and that's what I, that's what I love about this and that all other illustration is uh, he's going to be howling in pain and weeping soon. I wonder – now, this is what I'm wondering. Like, did he do that for a company, like that illustration, or was that for his yeah, personal no, work? That's, that, that's just for his personal work. Now, that's a nice piece okay. he did of the, uh, of the uh, Marvel monsters. Yeah, yeah, that looks fucking awesome, dude. That's insane. That isn't that great? Like, oh, that's crazy, dude. Gene Cole and each your heart out. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> and, and 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 Gene was a master uh, himself. So that's. Oh yeah, yeah. I got a bunch of those uh, Tomb of Dracula's, you know. And oh, Gene so... killed it on every one of those. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Uh, even his work on uh, Son of Satan, which was a really stupid comic. Uh, the oh, issue... dude, I love Son of Satan. I thought it was great. Well, you know? I mean, well, it's, it's you know. Um, I, I love Son of Satan too, but it's you know I I, I got to keep it real. It, it, it you know it's <laughs> it's it, it, it was cheesy. Uh, yeah, it was it's cheesy, cheesy as fuck. It's cheesy as fuck. Yeah. But he did an issue, uh, two issues that are absolutely horrifying, involving a demonic possession. Yeah, and there's this uh, one page uh, panel in particular of this possessed woman raking her fingers fingernails through her hair. That is uh, one of the best uh, horror illustrations. On are we it. talking about Gene Colan? Or are we talking about Gene Colan? Gene Colan. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's see. What else we got here? Oh, this is something he did for a magazine called Twisted. A horror mag. Oh, yeah. Here are some of the covers that he did for um, first comics. Uh, um, Release of the Lone Wolf and Cub comics. Oh, like get out! Kuzoi, Kuzoi Koiki. I'm sure I'm. Yeah, I would. I would strongly suggest that you do not send me that book. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. That's insane. I remember watching that movie when I was a kid, dude. And it was so goddamn brutal. Oh, like, oh I mean, uh, a Shogun Assassin. Yeah, dude. When they when they when he sliced those fuckers' throats, I mean, it wasn't just blood just oozing. That shit sprayed. It was like, like a ah, dude. like a like like a geyser. And guess what? That's what happens when you hit fucking arteries. But um, uh, uh, if if you enjoyed that movie, the originals are uh, are available now. Uh, the entire Lone Wolf and Cub series. It's a series of six movies. And, Get out. Uh, okay. Yeah. And uh, Shogun Assassin. What they did was. They took two of the Lone Wolf and Cub movies, the Baby mm -hmm. Cart series as it's known, and they chopped them up and glued them together. They dubbed them, dubbed it, and put in a new soundtrack, a synth soundtrack. And it should have been a catastrophe, but instead it was awesome. Yeah. Like you can't believe, like, like there's no way that that should have worked, but it worked like beautifully. <laughs> yeah, Shogun right. Assassin. I got that shit on Blu-ray, son. I gotta check that out. Yeah, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. have to look it up. Like we gonna have to talk offline and go ahead and uh, square up on some of this stuff. Most you know definitely. Most definitely. But yeah, dude, if you if you if if this would uh, if if you feel like this would help you with uh, your own work, I absolutely would uh, would lend this to. Oh, you. Every, every artist is gonna collect this, dude. You know what I'm saying if you can't if you can't get some type of wisdom from looking at Plug's work. Then you you just can't learn. That's all right. there is to it. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. You're, I mean, you're, look at these werewolf by night covers. Jesus Christ, yeah, dude. Man. That is. Fucking oh, oh this is a new, this is his new his new stuff too. It's it's him covering his old work. Oh like, really? Yeah. Sweet. This is him. This is him recreating um, his old werewolf by night covers. Nice. Jesus. You have to be bored as hell to go ahead and do shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got I got the um, I got the big book of Werewolf by Night where it I mean the thing's like five inches thick or something like that, and it chronicles every issue of Werewolf by Night, right? Oh, the and was, I gotta be honest, a lot of that stuff was not very impressive. Oh, you know? dude, dude. So many of these Son of Satan, Ghost Rider, Werewolf by Night. As I mean, you can obviously movies. tell he was cutting his teeth, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but boy, man, 
he he caught on and he got better and he got better quick. Oh, absolutely. Like him and a lot of those old artists had that. Like Jim Starlin said, like back then when they when they hired Plug and they hired Sterling and all that kind all those kind of guys, he yeah. said Marvel was looking for anybody who can hold a pencil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And okay. um I'm sorry, go on. Yeah. No, no. Well, they they had to learn. It was like a trial by fire because if they didn't, like I said, like Starlin almost got fired over that issue of Iron Man. <laughs> it was oh, so bad. You, you know, you, you, you want to hear something that's going to drive any wannabe comic book writer crazy? Um, I was going through a. Um, I don't know what, 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 why I didn't just throw it in the garbage, but uh, one day I got something in the mail from a community college that uh, was a catalog of classes that they were offering for the adult learning program. And I'm flipping through, and there was a, a, a course on writing comic books. And it was mm -hmm. uh, being taught by Dennis O'Neill, the Batman guy. The okay. Batman guy, the guy who made Batman cool again, the guy who was the Batman uh, writer and also editor on the Bat books for about, I don't know, 30 years. Yeah. And so I was like, fuck yeah. And I took the class and, uh, you know, I, he and, and, and Denny was awesome. He, you know, not only the knowledge that he was dropping, but also just the fucking stories he would tell. We're fucking classic. Yeah. We're, we're, you know, we're, uh, we're classic. Of course, now I completely forget what my freaking point was. Um, <laughs> I'm sure, it'll come back to me like in fifteen minutes or. So. Dude, that happens to me all the time. I know. Like, it's craziness. Yeah, yeah, because I'm, because I'm, I, it's I, I know. You're I, old. It's yeah, you're old. yeah. <laughs> all the herbal refreshment that I partake in to uh, remain sane. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can, I can take that. Is that Herbal medicinal? refreshment. <laughs> Purely medicinal. And are, are those recreations of his covers or is that yeah, these the are, actual these, covers? These are recreations. So you can see Homeboy still has his fucking chops. Oh, he's definitely got his chops. He probably doesn't think he does. But <laughs> Mike, please do a fucking six gun gorilla cover for me. <laughs> yeah, Mike, please. <laughs> Honestly, like if something like that were to happen, I I think I might just straight up to start fucking crying because oh yeah, I've been well, such I'd, a this, I'd, I'd straight I'd up throw up first, <laughs> <laughs> right? I'd be like I'd be like somebody fucking pinch me, man. Yeah, just uh, yeah. So hey, here's uh, this plume cover for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no yeah, no, no, because that would be. Uh, like uh, a childhood uh, dream, yeah, like, like uh, come true because I've li he's literally been my favorite artist my entire life. Well, I mean, is he still open for commissions or anything like that? Like Mike Plug, or does he even do commissions? Because I know I, a lot of those older guys don't, you know. But I shot um, I, I, I shot a message to his Facebook, but I don't know who uh, runs his Facebook. Ah, yeah, that could be a problem. Yeah, because I think I, I like I was dealing with Neil Vokes, um, oh. and Neil's one of my favorite artists too. Because Neil used to do a lot. He did a horror series called Flesh and Blood, and we're gonna we're gonna review that. I, I got to get in touch with him and see if he'll do an interview. But um, oh, but, awesome! But he cut his chops with Comic Kamiko doing uh, Robotech, and he was one of the first manga artists in the states that that did like a manga title. So he did Robotech. And then he later on did a, a book called Eagle. And then later on, he went ahead and he went and done, uh, he did uh, Batman Adventures and shit like that. Well, anyway, I was always a Neil D. Vokes fan, you know, even though like he, he never really made a huge name for himself, nothing like Plug or anything like that. But mm -hmm. I got him to do a couple of road trip pieces for, oh, you know, it. oh God, dude, they're hanging up in my mouth. I actually posted one to Twitter, but um, yeah, dude. So, yeah, I, you know, I, I kind of get that feeling like to have like, a, you know, a master go ahead and play with your your character a little bit. Yeah. Of course, of course. Look oh, at that God. Frankenstein. That is crazy. Dude. Is that fucking like, awesome? I, yeah. Oh, I, I had this, by the way. The, oh, really? Uh, uh, I had all of these. I think I still have some of them. The uh, uh, Power Records book and uh, record set. It, uh -huh. These were comic books, Marvel comics, that would come with a little uh, uh, 45. And okay. you play the 45 as you were reading the comic, and it would basically turn your comic into a radio show. So 
I was used to kind of like sitting in my room with the door closed and making sure my brother was nowhere nearby. Now, was it sound effects on air or was it sound effects, voices, music, the whole? So they would read the book with you or something like that. It would be like a radio show. Okay, right, right. and it would, and you so you would read along with it. And oh, okay, I see what you're saying. I learned. I learned that's this is how I learned to read. Yeah, at a, at a okay. very. It's kind of like the Golden Record reprints a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you can you can uh, find these online, uh, although they go for a, pre- a pretty penny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it was the very first issue of Monster of Frankenstein. Yeah, I actually got that issue. It's a little dry rot. <laughs> it's, oh, dude! It's yeah, if, we, if, you, if you want to bust that out, oh, I just remember my no, point no, no. You covered about, it. Yeah, uh, I just remember my, my point about uh, 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 Denny O'Neill. Mm-hmm. One of the questions that we students asked him was, "How do you break into the business?" And he was like, "Okay, well, every four years it's something different." He said, "Right now, if you want to break into comics, break into Hollywood, become like a, yeah. a like a successful screenwriter, and then you can break into comics." Great. Now, when he was uh, in the business, he said, this is how you broke into comics back in like the uh, 60s and the 70s. Yeah, it was a lot easier back then. Want to be writers? This is going to this is going to piss you off badly. So just brace yourself for it. Okay. what happened was you would write them and say, hey, I want to write comics and write you back and say, "Okay, cool. Here are some pages of artwork with the bubbles and the uh, narration uh, wh- whited out and uh, just fill in the blanks. And yeah. so, yes, <laughs> yes. Mother- motherfuckers, man. The, all they had to do was put something good in those blanks. And if they liked what they read, you got a job writing comics. It didn't yeah, mean that you were going to... It didn't mean that you were going to stay. Yeah. You at least got your fucking foot in the door and got a well, chance. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like back then, like when Jim Starlin said they were willing to hire anybody who can hold the pencil, he was dead serious. Cause I'm going to tell you right now, like even when I was growing up and I was like, I want to be a comic artist. Um, like anybody who's actually in the art industry who heard you say that didn't consider you a real artist. You see what I'm saying? Like, if yeah. you drew superheroes, you weren't a real artist. You know, right. it wasn't right. like in the fine art community, like snub their nose at you. Um, oh yeah, it was, it was kind of like you were a joke. You know? Oh, Stan Lee. Uh, 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 sorry, sorry to uh, interrupt you. But no, no, Stan, no, it's fine. Stan Lee said, you know, he, you know, he would go to these, uh, you know, publishing uh, industry parties, and that uh, mm-hmm. people would. Like, oh, so what do you do? And he would say, oh, I write comic books. And then people would very sort of go, oh, that's very interesting. And they would politely sort of drift away. Absolutely. And that's 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 pretty much what I was dealing with, like, with, um, you know, with, with that kind of thing. Like, I mean, it was ridiculous. Like, I was like, dude, I can outpaint and outdraw any of you motherfuckers. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> you know? I and, know. But and then you like, kind of get a, you, you get of a, a pornographer. Pornograph- yeah, I mean, it's kind of like you get a feel of what this is all about. Like the fine art industry was the biggest joke ever because once I realized what was going on there, it was a bunch of people who didn't have talent that went to school to learn how to paint, you know, and actually talk the lingo of an artist. Like, yes, yeah, like, all about the fucking lingo, all about. It's the all fucking, about that. Yeah. It's all uh, hey, like our, our like they they would they would name drop a, a few like famous artists, you know, like from you know, whatever, you know, whatever era and go ahead. And, and if they would compare their work to it. And then it was a bunch of guys like actually took up like one in every hundred of those fine artists actually had talent. And, right. but the rest of them were just blowing each other's egos up. You see what I'm saying? And then like a lot of them had enough charisma to actually talk rich people into buying their work because they would be able to explain how it's good instead of having them look at it and oh. realize how good it was. You know? I, I heard this in an interview with um, Gregory Dark. He's a guy who was a pornographer who started doing uh, music videos, was very successful, and then started directing features. He went to one of these schools, 
And in that school, not you'd have to like produce art, you know, like a painting, and then mm -hmm. you'd have to explain to a panel of teachers what everything meant, what it represented, uh, you know, what 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 the meaning of the work was. This is not what the point of art is. The point of art is that you could show uh, a painting to uh, five people, and each one of them could come away with a uh, a different meaning. Right. Well, if you fucking explain what your work is about or what it means, that's not what art art's about. The th that answer is for the fucking critics and for the fucking readers. Well, here's here's my take on it. If right. you have to explain why your artwork's good, then it's not good. Bingo. You know, and here's another thing too. Like, um, uh, art is real art is supposed to invoke an emotion or a response. Yes. Like if you're, if somebody looks at your art and they're like, eh, <laughs> because you put a couple of stick figures and shit like that, yeah. that's not invoking an emotion or a response. Like when people look at my comic work, they're like, dude, that's fucking awesome. That's an, that's a response. You see what I'm saying? Oh. Or if they're like, that's fucking hideous. That's yeah. still a response. I'll take yes. that. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's like Randy Macho Man Savage said. He was like, you know, if people if people want to throw a beer at me, that's cool. You know, the worst thing they could do yeah. is nothing. And the worst thing well, that that's that exactly Alan Moore. Alan Moore said nothing. the same thing. It's like you don't have to like me, you don't have to like my work, but uh, I'm but you will respond to it. You yes. Know what I'm saying like Absolutely. yeah. And, you know, when, when I was in college, I took a uh, a class in filmmaking that was taught by the most pretentious motherfucker, right? And mm -hmm. this asshole, man, he really didn't like me. And uh, because he found out that I would, you know, he found out that I was, um, that I was German. And so he was like, you bastard. Oh. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? We're just a sinister people. So um, what, what, um, you know, people would make these really pretentious little art films, and uh, like like somebody made a film of an oscillating fan, and that's all it was was a static shot of an oscillating fan. And this guy, this motherfucker, would w like watch the mo watch this little short and went, "I think what you're saying is is that American politics is like." you know, like a, like an oscillating fan that basically it moves to the right and then yeah. it swings back to the left. Like reading all this meaning into shit that wasn't there, right? Yeah. So I wanted, I, I realized a certain point because he was like, at, at all my films, he was just like, that's shit, right? And I was the only yeah. person he was doing this to. So I wanted a passing grade. So you know what I did? Hmm. I made a film, a static shot of a toilet bowl. Yeah. Of the of like a close up of the uh, of of the drain, and just kept flushing the toilet, and <laughs> and 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 he was and he was just he was he was blown away by it, and I forget the meaning that he ascribed to it, but I just nodded my head and agreed and was like, <laughs> 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 so, yeah, yeah, like that's what I'm saying. I mean, these are people who 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 love smelling their own farts. You exactly. know what I'm saying? I mean, it's exactly. crazy. It's, but, it's insane. insanity. This is fucking art right here, man. You know, and that's not and that's not, the, <laughs> it's you know, nuts, other dude. like, yeah, absolutely. Like this. the term itself, fine art makes me bristle every fucking time I hear it. You know, who decides these things? Rich people. You know, and, and uh, pretentious motherfuckers. That's a, that's a nice Grim Reaper there. Hold on issue one second. I'm Journey into mystery at the moment. That's a pretty cool. Okay, poster. Brian. Hold on one second. I uh, you cutting out a little bit on my end. Like I'm sure everybody else can hear you. Like, <laughs> all right. Let's see here. I'm talking okay. some sh shit anyway, but yeah, no, um, you know, the f there you go. I got you. You know, I, 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 I get, I, I can, I can get a little, I can get a little worked up sometimes. 
No, no, I do the same thing, especially when it comes to the subject of, uh, you know, people taping a banana to a wall. Because <laughs> that's person... basically what we're talking about. Yeah. 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 Now, mind you, if the person doing that is making mad crazy money and then laughing their ass off to the bank, I got no problem with that. Uh, there's a really great story, uh, about, um, oh God, this was in this, this was in this, I think the sixties or the seventies, uh, a guy wanted to, uh, fuck with a bunch of art critics. So what he did was he had a art show, a gallery showing for, uh, a painter, a new painter named Pierre. Yeah. And I don't know if you heard this story before, but, uh, the critics went crazy over the paintings. They're like, this man's a genius, clearly a visionary, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When do we get to meet him? And the guy who uh, was behind the whole thing was like, oh, you can meet him right now. He's right in the back. I'll bring him out. He brought out the artist. It was a fucking chimpanzee. <laughs> right up to your face so and awesome. dissed you. But, but, yeah, exactly. He basically was showing how, how full of shit they were. Yeah. Yeah, that's insane. And they probably just, just kept the joke going too because they didn't wanna they didn't want to look like idiots. Yeah. Well yeah, a little too late at that point. <laughs> yeah. Now of course if oh, they were if God. they were this cool, like... they would suddenly realize like, yeah, maybe I am full of shit. But unfortunately people like that aren't given to uh uh introspection. No, no, it's yeah, like like I said, these are people who they smell our own farts. Dude. Yeah, yeah. That's, high, <laughs> yeah, high yeah. on our own farts. Dude. Yeah, and I understand when, like you say, like you know, you, you like your your own worst critic, etc. I am too, but uh, you know what we're doing is we we don't want to be those people that get high off the smell of their own farts. We don't want to be the kind of people that have smoke blown up our asses and start to believe our own hype. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I'm in total agreement and. That's what I'm saying. Like you look at Plug's work and Plug is actually, he's a real artist. Like he can paint, he can draw, he can illustrate. And just because it's comic art, does that mean that you write it off as, as being not, not art <laughs> or not if, real art? That's if, retarded. If you live in France, you don't. If you live in Japan, you don't. If you live in America, no. basically you're like one notch above a pornographer. Yeah. I mean, it, well, it used to be that way. Nowadays it's a lot different. I mean, thank God Kirby got to live to the point to where he got to see his artwork in a gallery, you know? Oh, and I, too, like, man. Yeah. Like, that's that's insane. I mean, Chrome actually brought it to another level because Chrome actually traded sketchbooks for a villa. <laughs> I mean, it's craziness. Yeah, yeah and you but know what? He, he he deserves that. And and Kirby deserved so much more. I wish I wish he'd been around for uh for for the for the movies. I wish he'd been around to get some of the love that uh, Stan Lee got, you know. And 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 you know, not to take anything away from 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 Stan, you know. Love all those all those cats. They gave us uh, uh, so much know. so much great work, you know. Yeah, I'm I'm totally in agreement that Stan he deserved a level of of fame and stuff like that because of the work he did with Marvel. I mean, I'm I'm not going to take anything away from him as far but as so that did goes. So many as others as, like, taking credit for some of the stuff that he didn't I do. Know. That's kind of wrong, you know. I know. I, mean, I know. And the worst, I think of... it, it said somewhere is that he said that he he him and Kirby created um Captain America, and actually Captain so America Simon. was created when Stan was 12 years old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I'm with, saying with, about with Kirby Joe, and yeah, yeah, Joe Simon and Jack Kirby. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, uh, so it's I mean. It's just a lot. I, I mean, I'm not going to get into it because there's a lot of Stan Lee fans out there. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not, like I said, I'm not taking anything away from him because he did, he did a huge part. His, his contribution to comics is unmeasurable. Just it like is. Kirby's. Yeah, you know? it is. It is. Um, and, but at the same time, you got to keep shit real and you also have to, you know, uh, uh, you know, confront people's shortcomings. I know that he had regrets about uh, his relationship with 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 Jack. Uh, the, yeah. two, the two of them actually did uh, sort of officially make up before Kirby died uh, over the radio. Like uh, Stan was yeah. being interviewed on a comic book uh, related show on a WBAI, right? Uh, which is public mm -hmm. radio. 
and uh, Jack called in and, um, you know, and the two of them had a nice conversation and they both talked about like, uh, you know, and Stan especially was like, talked about what an honor it was uh, uh, to, uh, to um, uh, work with Jack. Yeah. And, you know, you look at, you look at what they accomplished together, especially those old fantastic fours. And, you know, it's just, uh, you know, they, 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 you know, uh, magic. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. I mean, and everybody wants to say like fantastic four is actually pulled from Jack's portfolio because he worked on, um, uh, fucking, what was it? Something of the unknown. Um, well, he was, he, was uh, doing, he was doing the monster comics. He was doing the giant. Well, no, monster. no, it's it's it's. God damn it! I can't remember the name. But anyway, like he did some work for DC, you know, and it's based off of a like some characters he created with on like on DC's Dom. But you know what? That's the reason why you don't know the name of that of that series, and you do know the name of the Fantastic Four is living testament to the to the, the chemistry between Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Without you know what I'm doubt. saying? It's because it's because of those characters, because those characters are so yes. memorable. And the reason they're so memorable is because they were created to work together. Yeah. You know, you look at something like the Avengers or justice league. Now that, that creates a very interesting problem and also creative opportunities for a writer. Yeah. Those characters weren't created to complement each other. Uh, but yeah. the Fantastic Four, uh, you know, that was, uh, you know, because Stanley was going to quit doing comics and his wife told yeah. him, hey, you know what, honey, if you want to do, if you want to quit comics, I support you. But before you go, why don't you try doing one your way? Well, and that's Stanley's story. But then Jack Kirby's story. story is like he walked yeah. into Marvel's office and they were taking the chairs out and Stanley was crying and Jack's like, Go go tell them to, to stop. You know, let's go create comics. And that's when they came up with the Fantastic Four. And that's supposedly saved Marvel. Like, because Marvel was on the verge of being going bankrupt at that point. Well, that's um, for sure. That that we know for a fact. That we know for a fact. That uh, But it's that, all in who you believe, because I mean that's two different stories right there. You totally, know what I'm saying? Totally, like yeah, totally different, totally different. Uh, one thing yeah. one thing I think is definitely uh, definitely true is that um is that Stan was working from a place of like, hey man, if I was a superhero, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't have a secret identity. I'd want everybody to know how awesome I was, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, and that's such a fundamental part of the of the Fantastic Four, and that's what's going to be a challenge going forward with uh, the uh, MCU. Is the characters in the MCU already don't have uh, secret identities for the most part? So the whole idea yeah. of a pub of of uh, of superheroes who don't have pub who do have a, who don't have secret identities is uh, you know is going to be a uh, a little uh, a little bit lost. But you know what? Fuck it. As long as they get they get the characters right, as long as they get Doctor Doom right, I'll be happy. Yeah, just 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 stay stay true to the original. You know, the spirit of the uh, the creators. You know. Which I don't think they're going to do, but that's a, oh, that's another so show. Either. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I, I can still cross my fingers, man. I'm cr I'm crossing my fingers and hoping it should be like that. You know what it should be? It should be a Disney a Disney movie. It should be a yeah. uh, it should be a family movie. Uh, I think, but uh, you know, who knows what they're going to do? Dude, it took me so long to track down all those Ghost Riders you're showing off right now. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, I've I've actually I've got the whole collection. Thank God for Christmas. <laughs> you know Hell yeah! Oh no, oh, yeah. I don't think I'm going to be and, able to yeah, afford it. And this it. very first appearance, of I got that one too. Yeah, coming yeah, through the rain, one. the line work here. Yeah, like right. those covers are insane, dude. Like they are fantastic. And yeah, they Pluk, are. Even though that like Pluke wasn't at his his best at that point, you know, not even close. And, no, not at all. Because I'll be honest, like I'm not a big fan of the artwork in those Ghost Rider. I'm a, I'm just a fan of Ghost Rider, right? You know? But um, dude, dude it's a yeah, it, but, it, it's a dude on a chopper with a burning fucking skull for a head. Hello. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> dude. That's why when I bought my first chopper, I made sure to get something along those lines of the original <laughs> Ghost Rider. Yeah, and um, of, of course I sold it later on, and luckily, luckily enough, I never like killed myself on it. <laughs> Seriously, but it was um, but how like, fucking rock and roll is that character, dude? It's it's total metal, dude. I mean, come on, fuck. 
Now, wait. Now, let me ask you another question. Who who was it that was trying to take credit for the creation of Ghost Rider? Was it Plug or was it somebody else? It, oh, it wasn't. It wasn't. Did Marvel sued into poverty? No, oh, no, no, no. I think you're thinking of something different. It was Gary Friedrich who uh, f- who uh, created this version of the Ghost Rider because the original yeah. Ghost, Ghost Rider was a uh, Marvel Western character who wrote around. Well, a- actually, it wasn't a Marvel Western character. That, oh, okay. That was before Marvel. Like, Marvel barked that oh, character. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're, you're totally fucking right. You're totally fucking right. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, and then so- they, they kind of ruined it. They turned him into a rapist. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah. So this version of the Ghost Rider was like sort of what now we would call a reboot. Yeah. And so it was a guy on a chopper with a burning fucking skull for a head. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you're a kid, man, even as an adult, how do you not fucking immediately go uh, sold? Dude, I mean, who... I mean, it's genius, but it's like one of the most simple things ever, right? Because back then, you know, the Hell's Hell's Angels and all that were in the news, you know, for like killing people and running drugs and all this kind of shit. And and everybody wanted to be a biker back then, you know, like kids. Oh, Oh, the biker movies were out. And of course, Marvel was always hip to follow a trend. That's when we started getting a lot of black superheroes, you know, uh, Brother Voodoo and uh, and uh, Luke Cage, you know, came around. Iron Fist, Blade, yeah, Iron Fist because of the Kung Fu craze. Luke Cage because of the black exploitation movies. Shang Chi, Shang Chi, Kung Fu. Hopefully, that movie's not gonna suck ass. Although I'm not, I'm not holding out hope. Oh, I wouldn't either. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't give them so much credit. Like nowadays, like I mean, they they came out the gate good. But now, I mean, they're putting out all these woke movies, so I don't know. I mean, when they when I when I seen the lineup for Eternals, I I almost, dude, I I threw a fit. Like I was, I was physically, I was pissed. You know what I'm saying? I was like, that's not Jack Kirby's vision. Yeah, it's not even close. It's not even close. Like the Thor movie, you looked at Asgard and you were like, okay, this is a nice combination of Kirby and Walter Simonson. Absolutely. They, yeah. were t- they were taken from like the two definitive runs. So that, yeah. was, that was cool. But um, the problem also is, is that all of these movies are tentpole movies. Yeah. So they all have like $300 million budgets. So you're not going to get anything special. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get anything magical. What I'm hoping they'll do is that hopefully they'll start doing smaller movies you know, like if they did the if they did the Marvel monster movies with like twenty million dollar budgets, then you might have something special. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, everything has to end with a light show. You know, like Avengers yeah. Two, where you're just like looking at a screen and the screen is just cluttered with shit. Like they're just throwing shit on the screen, as opposed <laughs> to like like uh the, like the like the really good the like, I mean what are the what are the best MCU movies I think it's fucking uh the second and third Captain America movies right I thought those were good actually I, I actually liked them and what? I like I I like the bunch of, I mean there's there's barely any Marvel movies that I didn't like it's just when they started announcing the new movies you know that's I, well I mean Captain Marvel was kind of shit and her them crowbar yeah, and her into the uh, MCU was just really stupid. And that was that was the warning sign right there. That was telling you what what's to come. You and, know? And, and and sometimes and look, sometimes you're gonna whiff, right? So yeah. uh, now one thing I didn't like too was, was like terrible. Spider Man. Yeah. Like Spider Man Far From Home. Like I didn't like that they were trying to make him the new Iron Man. Like I thought that was I, stupid. I, I I haven't seen it. All I know is that the MCU Spider Man doesn't really feel like Spider Man to me. Like no, if you look, no, if you not, look at, not really. You know, you, it feels if, like if you look at like the second Amazing Spider Man movie, which is shit because it's trying yeah. to be Twilight, right? You're basically trying to take yeah. Spider Man and turn it into Twilight. But the scenes where Spider Man is a guy in a costume doing backflips and shit and the way he's like uh, uh, taunting the villains by being a wise ass. I was like, that's fucking Spider-Man. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But just no, those I'm, scenes, I'm in just total those agreement. 
Just those yeah. moments. It's just like, could you please just take those moments and extend those into a into a full movie? <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, I'm in I'm in complete agreement. I just, I mean, the first Spider Man movie they put out was with um with the new guy. You know, um, uh, I thought that was okay. You know, it's, it's just right. when they put out Far From Home, it was like, eh, I thought they were on the right track. And but then again, they made Mary Jane Black, and I didn't think that was cool either. No. You know, because, no. I mean, this is an iconic character. This character is back. I mean, this is from the well, very first fight, you know. It's the ginger it, it just, washing. It's the ginger washing. Yeah, it just it, it it's crazy, right? I mean, it, is that crazy or what? It you is know, crazy. I mean, it's it I is crazy. Okay. I don't get it. Here's the thing too about Mary Jane, and this is a thing that they also got wrong with casting Kirsten Dunst in the Sam Raimi movie. Mm -hmm. Mary Jane is supposed to be smoking hot. Way, yeah. way, way out of Peter Parker's league. Yeah. That's the point. She's like a fucking supermodel. And she's a gorgeous, mm -hmm. gorgeous redhead, right? Uh, yeah. But yeah, for some reason, Marvel Marvel doesn't like redheads. And so uh, they they keep uh, race swapping uh, redheaded characters. And yeah. that could... Yeah, it's it's craziness. I don't I don't get it. Like, even Flash Thompson wasn't a jock. You know? And I'm like, yeah. what the... Yeah. You know? I, know. I was like, what are you guys doing, dude? Like, that's... That's not the point. Peter's supposed to get bullied by Flash Thompson. Flash Thompson's not supposed to be another well, he's nerd. A dick. He's a dick. <laughs> like, he's a total asshole. Yeah. He's, he's supposed he, to be a meathead. He's supposed to be a meathead who's the most popular kid at school because he can score touchdowns. Yeah. So all absolutely. of the so all of the kids love him and all the teachers love him too. Yeah. And and uh, Peter Parker's just a fucking egghead nerd who nobody has any respect for. All right, but, Brian, we've got to bring this to a close. It's getting uh, late. Yeah, and, it kind of uh, is. It's past our hour. <laughs> but, it, um, it, yeah, but it has been fun and uh, hopefully educational. It has been. Yeah. So uh, any uh, inspire, inspiring artist out there, you know, it, look, look to the past. Check out those vintage books and those vintage artists because I'm telling you, Plug, Ryston, all those guys, that's who you should be looking at. Virgil, Vigil, <laughs> Tim. All these guys. That's where the style's at. Most definitely. There you go. Most nice definitely, man. Ch check check, check so, out the old stuff. You will learn. Absolutely. We'll talk to you soon. You guys take it easy. Keep drawing. Peace, love, and soul. <laughs>